Hello and welcome back. Today I have a Turby 1503 and this is my first uh, Turby device. I already reviewed uh, some uh, TTI devices and the tender but I never had the other one. So and, and this is the 1503. Uh, I have read there is also an uh, HA version which is a high precision. I think it has a digit extra. Uh, this is the standard 1503 and I don't have an adapter so I need to find out what it uh, runs on and as you can see it says external power and then I begin to wonder why would you call it external power then there probably is internal power and I don't know if you have seen my other review of the, the tender uh, frequency counters and then I imagine how this fight would be between the two T's uh, because the tender already always had uh, batteries in his frequency counter and then it was a fight and he wanted his uh, batteries and I still have here in my sorry here in my uh, in my TTI there's still batteries so I thought okay tender uh, won this fight but uh, let's see because I somehow have the feeling that this one also has batteries because why would you call it external power if it only has external power then you would just say power so it uh, it is also a little bit heavy so uh, let's see well it seems you can just uh, open it just by un untying four really tall screws I'm uh, so let's see. Uh, turn it back over. Yes, look at that. <laughs> it indeed has a battery compartment. This terribly tender, they love batteries. And it is indeed very practical because then you can just use one single device, you can use it on your desk and you can use it while traveling or while being mobile and doing your repairs and it, it is kind of smart and nowadays we just have separate uh, machines for those, well marketing wise it may be smart but I, I like the idea in that sense. Look at that, that's the battery compartment. Well, the battery compartment is broken and I must say it looks a lot like the battery compartment from the from the tender frequency counters and also it is screwed in the bottom a lot of al aluminium is around here also aluminium cover there is an aluminium button I will zoom in later it is all constructed very well I do see some some battery damage but uh, I will just clean that I'm, I'm not going to use batteries I'm a bit surprised about the power connector because it looks like a, like a normal jack and well it, a jack for power plug is not a problem except for when it's just laying around because you just have on your pin you have the power and that's why probably later they designed different DC plugs because yeah for me it's not that safe but uh, okay and well what I see now except from the fingerprints because you probably need to when the batteries are empty you need to open it and uh, that was nicer done in the in the tender because they really had a battery compartment that you could slide open but uh, terribly decided that you need to open the whole meter but then he took care of the protection so yeah either way is, is fine I will have a look if I can find a, a manual or a service manual to see how much power we need to put and if I cannot find out I will just put six times one and a half so that would be nine volts so uh, let's see okay I found out you can uh, run it between uh, 6.3 and 15 volts uh, but they say it's better to use around nine volts and you can use uh, yeah normal DC adapter it just needs to provide uh, those nine DCs uh, I'm feeling it now with the uh, with the Farnell I also uh, have a review about the Farnell how I restored this one it's now working fine uh, let's see if it switch on I just connected it to the to the jack plug so uh, 
it does switch on. Ooh, it does have a lot of digit. That's kind of cool. Uh, what I want to try is just see, I will zoom in and then we can put the voltage reference just to see if it makes any sense that what it's displaying. Okay, I have a setup. We have the O1 in the back. I will speed that up a, a bit. And my voltage reference and we have the turbo. So let's see if we switch it on. Yes, it's now on 2.5 volts. And on the O1 that is 4988. And it is 4989. So okay. That is uh, two and a half volts I would say. I will put it here on uh, 320 millivolts DC in volts. So let's switch it over. And what does this one say about that? 2.497. So it's a bit low, but uh, it's nice. You can see how uh, the resolution is not that bad for such an old meter. I think it's 80s. I, I haven't found a real date yet. But uh, seeing the display, because it's not those red seven segments LEDs, so I think it's it's early 80s. Um, let's see if we. So it's two, four, nine. This is not bad at all. Okay, now we can go up to 32 volts, so I can also go to 5 volts. This should be 5, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and it's fine. Okay, so again it's a little bit low, 7.5 should be 7, 5, 0, 0. Still a little bit low, we can adjust that, that's okay. And the 10 should really be 10. A little bit low, but we're talking about 6 millivolts. That is nothing. Even that one is, is 1, 2 millivolts off. So. Okay, uh, let's clean. And open, of course. Okay, it seems that it was in a very dry environment because it still looks uh, very nice. Even the, the, the pots are all shiny. So that is really great. The switches look a little bit less complicated than you see in the Philips and the Flukes. But it's still now a lot of switching is done. Most of the components look good. I have not found a date on anything, so I'm still not sure about the age, but maybe if we open a bit further. And uh, here we have the calibration manual. So we're gonna follow this. Okay, first one is the pot A2. Well, I marked them. Uh, so that is the two. And then we need to put it on it switched on for a while, first of all, because uh, also it needs to stabilize. I put it on DC volts, the lowest setting, 320, and then we should short circuit it, and then it should be exactly zero. Well, that is already zero. That is this pot, this one. Oh yeah, you can see it move. Okay. On off, on off, on off. Okay, that is good. Then we do the setting. You need to go to DC faults. This. 3200. You insert 2.5 volts exactly well we can do that because the reference is exactly that so let's do that switch 
נכון? אוקיי. It should be exactly okay. And we need to change then pot 5, which is located in the back here. Okay, it's pot 4. I put it more or less back. And we need to put this is 4. That is this one. Yeah, that makes more sense. Two point five exactly. That's it. Oh, and there goes my reference. <coughs> what I wanted to do is does it change if I put this on? Okay, it doesn't. That is good. Okay. Next step, we need to put two hundred and fifty millivolts and adjust a3 okay okay i adjusted this again uh, because of course i don't want 2.5 exactly i want 24989 exactly because that's what is on my reference so i have now 24989 so that is exactly what I see also on the Kitli, so that means I can use the Kitli to exactly have the 250 millivolts that we need to adjust on the A3. Also I'm wondering if I change the voltage, because it's now exactly what it should be, the 24989. And if I go back to, let's say, to a little bit lower, 8.8, .8, it is still the same. I go to 11.4 it is still the same so that works very well I put it back to 9 so that's good now I want to try to put the 250 millivolts and I will use the my uh, uh, this pot is not that great this one is better to see how low we can go Okay, I have now 250 almost, and I need to need to try to get it the same, and I need to do that on three. That is this one. Let's try if I can get it. Okay, the 25 volts is also good. Um, yeah, I was really struggling to get it correct. And then, of course, you just need to, because it is very old, you need to try many times to switch. And I clean with the contact cleaner, and at some point, it gives you the correct value. So the 25 volts is good. If I put it back on my voltage reference, let's do that. Two and a half volts is good. In the lower range, it is exactly what it should be. The higher range, two up five, five volts, seven and a half, and ten. So I would say that is a winner. And if we go back to the twenty-five, if you can see compared to the Kidley, this is not bad at all. Also, you can calibrate on the ohm setting. They say you need about 20k exactly. Well, I don't have that. But if I measure here, 19.93 something. And I do that on the family as well. 19.93 something. So, that is good enough. 
Perfect. So that was it. A uh, little review, a little calibration. Uh, you might have noticed I didn't uh, calibrate the amps. There was no uh, no adjustment for it, and it's probably because you measure the voltage over a shunt. So if you are uh, adjusting the voltage correct, then measuring over the shunt will uh, exactly be as good. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.